Uh, hello, everyone. Before we have uh, the panel, I will do a short presentation about we don't have time. Uh, we are a startup and we are addressing the diff most difficult problem in the world and also the most important problem to address. The climate crisis, we all know this, this doesn't look good. We have been above 1.5 degrees for most part of this year. And uh, we need to stop this, otherwise we are in deep, deep problem. This is going, is already now affecting us and it's going to affect us more, but we decide if we can turn things around. The problem here, my team is just back from this meeting, COP28. There's a lot of world leaders there, and the problem is that our world leaders are not, they're not just doing the right thing fast enough, men are walking in the wrong direction, accelerating this problem. Uh, and this is just a few examples. The new president of Brazil, the very first day of the COP meeting, he announced that Brazil will join OPEC. And he is seen by many as the climate savior. Some other example, UK, during the climate week, they announced that they're going to sell 100 new oil and gas licenses. Canada approves 12 billion offshore oil plan, Norway, 19 billion in new oil extraction. United States, the, U, the Joe Biden administration has approved more oil, coal and gas compared to the Donald Trump administration the very first two years. This will not work. So we need to do something about it. And unfortunately, what we're seeing here and what we're going to see more of is increased conflict level. People are getting desperate. And I don't believe that that will solve this problem. So what we do, our mission to address this, is that we unite the world for the climate solutions. We connect everyone that are working on solutions. And we're doing that as a media platform. We are today the world's largest media for climate solutions. We have connected over 100,000 decision makers and leaders within business, within science, that are working on the solutions. We have today about 350 global companies that are clients that are using our platform to communicate what they do. And we work closely with the United Nations and we reach over 190 million people on social media. And I'm now going to show you why we need a global media platform focusing on the solutions. Because there's so many solutions out there. So I want to ask you a question and the question goes like this. What share of the global electric energy production was fossil free in 2022? And I have four options you can answer and you can raise your hand. So how many of you think it was 6%? Raise your hand. 14%. A little bit more hands. 28%. 48%. It's only one person raising his hand, two. And, and, and it's one of our investors and one of my colleagues. The, the right answer is, it's 48%. And people don't know this. And you're the sustainability experts at this conference. You should know this, right? This is interesting and it's very good news. And in fact, just another example, China. Many complain about China they are actually exceeding 50% right now. So globally, we are nearing the tipping point of 50%. That's a big deal, because when fossil free are becoming the norm, the fossil will lose and be quickly phased out. And it's not just electricity, it's also those exponential cars with solar and electric vehicles that really pick and pay, change everything. And in the debate, many people are all talking about it's impossible to fix the climate. We need to, we need to kind of stop doing anything. We can't grow our economy. That's not really true. In fact, over 15 countries have decoupled. They are increasing their GDP and their emissions are going down. 
Uh, not fast enough, but they have starting to do this. China is not there, but their GDP is growing much, much faster compared to their emission. So this is hope. The problem, though, is not enough to flatten out the curve. We need to half it before 2030, and we're not nearly there. So that's why we are pushing for this narrative that we need to end the fossil fuel era. And before COP, we did this trailer where we were present doing 130 hour live broadcast. We gathered everyone that wanted to end fossil fuel at this COP meeting, and this was how it looked uh, before. We haven't had these temperatures in 120,000 years. Millions and millions of people need help when climate emergencies arise. We have the solutions to, to, to solve these problems, but we have to do it together. We're fighting, you know, dark forces. They are trying to kill us. It is not a joke. What do you give your child when they can't breathe? You actually have to take action. Action, not even ambition anymore. Out of COP28, out of this next summit, we need governments to come forward, to work with each other. Making sure that at COP we have a declaration on the full phase out of fossil energy. Because if we continue to burn fossil energy, we will not meet our goals. So what we did the very first day of the COP was that we launched this counter, where we gathered all the initiatives that we're pushing for ending fossil fuel. And it's everything from uh, business community, to individuals, to organizations, to cities, to countries. And this didn't look uh, this good in the beginning of the COP. It was eight countries supporting it. Now it's 130 countries. I haven't updated this slide. And it's almost 200 in the way we had the outcome. So we are focusing on the progress and mobilizing people around the progress, and that's very important. And people are knowing this, not just the good people, also the people that don't want this progress. And one example is that this is a scientist panel we had at COP. It's Sir David King and Johan Rockström and other very influential scientists. And what they are discussing here is a famous letter from OPEC that was leaked during the COP meeting. And what this letter says is kind of amazing. It says, simple, that the pressure against fossil fuel may reach a tipping point with irreversible consequences. I mean, that's how we are used to talk. They are talking about the pressure against them are at a tipping point. They were scared the hell that the world leaders will end fossil fuel. And they did that in the agreement. So that was the outcome. We have now agreed 200 countries to transition away from fossil fuel. I mean, it's not the best language in that. It could be interpreted in, in, in many ways. But it's a deal breaker. The fossil fuel have started to end, and it happened yesterday. And we, as a global media brand, played a part of mobilizing against around that. And this is not just something we do that is good for the planet. It's also business, because when the oil are scaling down, the green are scaling up. So we have actually just been nominated by Deloitte, where they have said that we are one of the fastest growing media company, tech company in Sweden. And this is our growth. We have today 350 companies that are using our platform, paying for it. Uh, we reach millions of people on social media, and we have mobilized all the important people on our platform around those solutions. And our help is our own platform that works. This is a very quick demo because we are a little bit uh, running over time here. But you can download our app, and you can use it for yourself. Here is all the action, everything you can read about the global climate conversation. And it's also a golden source where you can look up companies and public figures. So if I search for Apple, uh, I can see what people think of their climate action, and I can also see their climate emission. We are starting to gather the emission data so that we can compare companies 
regarding their emission data divided with revenues so that we can do rankings. This would be a game changer because no one wants to be at the end of those lists. And right now we're here at NOAA, guess what, fundraising. So if you want to invest in us, contact me. And now we have a great panel and I would like to start that panel by giving Marco a very big climate love for being one of our amazing investors believing in us and also doing this great event. So thank you so much, uh, Ingmar. Yeah, when I met Ingmar, I was like, hey, he's doing for the climate what Noah's doing for the startups. We have to work together because we all breathe the same air at the end of the day. Um, Ingmar, you gave very much a presentation about the problem, right? But you are also here to raise money to grow the solution. Yeah. Now, Noah is an investor conference. Can you tell people how you actually make money? We make money from companies and organizations that wants to communicate their action and influence decision makers, policy makers to embrace their solution and mobilize around that. So companies pay a subscription fee to be like, a little bit like Twitter verified, to be a verified like on our platform. You have 300 or 400 or how many customers you have? 350. And it's global corporation like IKEA, Microsoft, down to smaller. It's very much like a B Corp type of thing where you get certified through a platform of integrity because you are also hosting the United Nations Climate Conference, digital and virtual uh, streaming. So once you are there, you're part of a club, some, something like that. Cynthia, you are also an investor in We Don't Have Time, like me. Uh, we, f we bring our money uh, to the cause, not just our great uh, efforts. Why have you invested in Ingmar's Swedish-based climate change platform? So that was a very one of the easiest investment decisions I've ever made. Because when I make investment, I have a kind of five P principles. That is planet, purpose, people, passion, and the last profit. So when I met Ingmar, who I have known for a long time, uh, he is a very authentic and passionate leader um, driving this climate forward uh, effort. And then since its inception in 2016, oh, we don't have time, they have initiated the global youth movement on climate awareness globally. So making investment to uh, we don't have time was so easy. And I'm also very honored that Ingmar has invited me to join the board. And I am very much looking forward to work side by side with Ingmar to bring the company to the next phase together with you and other fantastic investors and to achieve profitability. OK, thank you so much. Christine, uh, maybe I should have actually gave you the opportunity to introduce yourself. <laughs> you are investing in sustainability companies out of Sweden. And Christine uh, is based in Zurich and has a sustainability fund. And you have invested impact fund. <laughs> impact sustainability, I guess it's uh, hopefully the same. No. Sustainable impact. Um, but tell me, why have you invested in We Don't Have Time? It's uh, super, thanks, dear Marco. It's super interesting, dear Cynthia, what you said uh, and being like, a, yeah, very like heartfelt also due diligence on your end. I think um, we went uh, into this, uh, yeah, with, with a very like minded mindset. However, we did a very comprehensive and lengthy due diligence um, as an impact VC fund, obviously. Uh, also looking very closely at the business model and how this company can make scale. Um, yes, we wanted to enable actually our LPs to be part of the solution and we are convinced that the climate crisis is absolutely not solvable without uh, communication and without um, yeah, really showing solutions and uh, we believe we don't have time is actually the only player who does that and who has really proven uh, that this can work and showing, showcasing by today's 350 paying 
large corporate customers is impressive. And uh, who knows Fishbrain? Ah, somebody does. So Fishbrain is a vertical community for people who like fishing. And it's, it's I think, also Swedish-based. Swedish, Swedish and it's worth, okay, came a bit down a little bit, but I think it was reaching 300 million. Who knows ResearchGate? A lot of people know ResearchGate. Similar value, I think. So the world to protect the planet, fighting climate change, is smaller than fishing and the world of the scientists. When we invested, when I invested together with Daniel Agata and many other NOAA regulars, we were looking and said, hey, there must be something else here. What's going on? Is there something on Facebook? No. Is there something on Twitter? No. So climate change, the largest platform to bring every stakeholder together is this platform. There's nothing else. Nothing. So now we are big enough we grew from 40,000 users to 150,000 users a month. And these are the right people. These are not tourists. These are scientists. These are politicians. These are sustainability officers. We are big enough to, apart from offering corporates to advertise their climate action, to bring new way of monetization. Ingmar, can you talk a little bit about your new revenue streams? I'm thinking mostly of the two. Uh, fascinating one, the climate solutions and the data side, which will finally, hopefully, bring our revenue to double-digit million. Yeah, we believe very much in, uh, because of regulation here in Europe, it's uh, a new regulation called the CSRD Directive, and that will make all the companies need to disclose their emission data as well as their financial data. And I used to work in finance, and in finance it's really easy to find the numbers for companies. But when it is finding numbers about companies' emission data, it's, it's like old school. You need to go to their website, you need to download the f their sustainability report, and you need to kind of find that information in the, in the footnotes. Uh, or you can buy it from, from ESG data companies, very expensive. So what we are doing is a little bit like Wikipedia. We are now mobilizing way, our community to publish it is the price to buy the emission data. IHS, you know who knows them, Information Handling Services, a US public information services company, sells that data. Otherwise, good luck, you have to crawl through the sustainability reports. So you're adding data yeah. to Yeah, and we are disrupting this because we're giving this data away for free. Investors don't like giving away things for free. But the thing here is, what's the value is not the data, it's the data about the people looking at the data. And we're right now in a close dialogue with a big, big media data company that can, can be a reseller of that information. This is how social media make money. It's not from ads, it's from their user data. Cynthia, what is your most important pressing question you like to ask Ingmar? Already a very tall order. So, uh, for me, there's no investment on a dead planet, period. So I actually would like to mobilize all the investors on site and investing we don't have time because this is the best investment in decades. So Ingmar, how would you think that you would reach 200 million of active, active users on your platform? Well, there are 200 million users uh, on the extended reach. This, Twitter and YouTube, or X it's called now, uh, so they reach. But I, I think on your platform, or is it actually important for you where on how you reach your users? Uh, the, the most important thing is that we reach them, and it's very hard to get people to a new platform if they don't deeply engage in, in, mm. in, in the issue. And this is the problem. Uh, there is not so much many leaders around the world that are really working on, on fixing the problem. And we are gathering a lot of them. I mean, not all of them, but a lot of them. If you take the COP meeting, they had 85,000 uh, delegates. And we have 100,000 registered members. It's very much, that's the community. And, and that's not many people, but if we are getting them to work closely together, and if we get them the audience, wherever they are, on TikTok, on X, on CNN, whatever, if we give them the audience, we will change the world. 
because we are much more than the oil lobby. They were 2,000 at the COP meeting. We were 83,000. Mm, wonderful. Christine, what's your favorite question for Ingmar? Well, um, dear Ingmar, how can we actually scale those 350 corporations to basically all large corporates <laughs> on this planet? How can we do that? Great question. That's what we are looking for, uh, raising money now. Uh, and uh, the way we're doing it is that we are lowering the fee to just be part of the platform. It will cost only $100 per month. Uh, so it's a little bit of, uh, like LinkedIn and other platforms. And, and our way to engage them is to publish the data about them and reach out to them and, and, uh, and ask them, do you want to verify your data that we already have on the platform? Because we have every important people, all the procurement, all the investors, all the policy makers, they look at your company on our platform. Do you want to be associated with your data, verify that and communicate to those people? That's how we're going to scale this. Cool. So don't think twice. Invest in we don't have time because we don't have time. Correct. It has been more than an investment. It has been an eye opener and I gained so many friends from all over the world being part of the We Don't Have Time initiative, which is not just an initiative but a startup with lots of legs and the usage is growing. So whoever didn't invest back then, you will see the valuation went up as revenues grew and usage grows and that's the only way. We have to have our platform. If there is no platform, there is no fight. Thank you so much, Ingmar, Sincha, and Christine, for being at NOAA. We will continue this work. Thank you. Deeply grateful. Thank you. Thank you.